Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly Books True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and I just wanted to have one little relook at one portion of this interview because my ears were just like, wait, what? <laughs> so let's have a look. Welcome back. Here we are back at this interview. Just one more time from the top, not all the way from the top. It's literally like a two minute portion that I just want to show you because Rose Davis has said on a TikTok live that the that Brian and Gabby did not live at the laundry's house. And then it made me think. But Cassie said they did. So I wanted to relook at this interview to see where she said it and how she said it and what it means. Right. Now, the thing is, Rose Davis said on TikTok live that Brian and Gabby lived in a condo. So that sent everyone on a wild goose chase for this condo. Two condos came up, one in Venice, Florida, and one called 5100 Linksman Drive. Both were previously owned by the Laundries. One sold in January 2020. The other sold July, I think, 2021. So, yeah, those condos, they really did own them. But there's been tenants in the one. They were, there was a tenant for six years. And the others got a note on the door saying, no, I don't know them. I've been here, living here for however long. We'll look at that in a moment. But that makes me go, what? Like, where, where is the condo? So whoever was watching Rose Davis's live stream hmm, on TikTok, if she does one again, can you please ask the address? Or please, can she come forward and just tell us where? Which condo? Why can't you just say where? In which general area? That would help. <laughs> So, okay, let's look at this. Why? Protect his client because she's not their client. Hold on. So I'm just as mad. Did they have a storage shed, Gabby and um? um they have a storage locker. Brian, do you know where it was? In, in... I have no idea. Literally no idea where the storage locker is. Okay. Do you know if your what date your brother flew back that your dad paid for the plane? Do you know what dates your brother flew back and that your dad paid for the plane? The husband now says, I had no even no idea he paid for the plane. Didn't even know he paid for the plane. Uh, Did he fly back? Yes, from, he flew back. Like around like... Yes, he flew back. What, the 17th or something? Around like the 17th or something? Yeah. After the fight. I always go back to that one sentence she mumbles there with the guy talking over her. Didn't even know he paid for the plane. Did he fly back? Yes, from, he flew back. Like around like what, the 17th or something? Around like the... They were taking things from the storage unit to put it back into the house. 17th or something, yeah, after the fight. He got here on the 17th. I don't know what day he left. He got here on the 17th. I don't know what date he left. But then she says the word they now. Did you see him at that, on that trip? Yes. What was discussed? Anything? Was he discussed he about... They were talking. Or he was telling me. They were talking. I mean, he was talking. Did you see that? So I'm not trying to... Uh, I'm not trying to really rustle up any leaves. I'm just like, why do you say they were saying? It's almost as if Gabby went with, which is something we speculated long ago, right? The day he left. Did you see him at that, on that trip? Yes. What was discussed? Anything? Was he discussed he was about... They were talking, or he was telling me where they were going next. Why face they were talking, or he was saying where they were going next, and then she said, I even FaceTimed with Gabby on that trip. And she said, on that trip, not on his trip or whatever, or during that trip. It's like on that trip, I FaceTimed with Gabby. So we, what from the condo, hmm? This mysterious condo or from the laundry's house. I'm starting to wonder if they had like a massive breakup, like went there together, like ended the trip and went there together. I still you I remember that whole speculation I had. I'm allowed to speculate. We all are. We all think. And I'm just thinking out loud. For a while, I'm like 17th to the 23rd. Okay, maybe it's not possible they drove the van. Because Gabby was allegedly in the Fairfield Inn and Suites checking out on the 24th. Right. But it makes no sense that she's like sitting there. But there was a power outage on the 21st, which is when she 
FaceTimed with her dad to say that she needed food. So that's interesting. I'm just thinking so much. I'm going to deep dive so I'm thinking about all this because I'm like, was that really at the Fairfield Inn? Yes, they had the power outage there. But is that where she got the food? Because what if she got the food at the condo? We don't know. We don't know all those details at this condo, whatever condo it is, right? The reason I'm saying that is because Cassie says they were talking about, I mean, he was talking about where they were going to go next. She also said they were moving stuff out of storage back into the house. Okay. They? I just heard they. And I didn't hear it so clearly before, but they? <laughs> so let's speculate for a second. If they flew home and then flew back, maybe they left the van there. Maybe they both flew. That's interesting. If they both flew, that will also make sense. That they both flew on the 17th. Obviously, they'd get there the same day. And then, uh, what, spend the 18th and 19th and 20th there. And then fly back to the airport to stay there on the 21st. She was seen checking out, though, on the 24th, right? So, I don't know what the hotel stay is all about. I don't know. But I'm just listening to these words and I'm like, they. Okay. Right. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? FaceTimed with Gabby and the kids on that trip. And then, I mean, Did he say he got in a fight with Gabby? No. He, didn't, he didn't talk about that incident? Just was surprised to us. Yeah. We're so remember when we said that Brian went home from the 17th to the 23rd, allegedly? That's what the lawyer said. First, I speculated, what if he didn't go at all? Now I'm speculating. What if they really did both go to get their stuff out of that storage unit? Back, take it back to the house. Yes, to save money possibly, because that's what the lawyer said. And that's sort of what Cassie's saying. Interesting. Of course they would have done that together. I don't think Gabby would have just been sitting at the hotel that whole time. So that makes it interesting. And the hotel did say, even though later they're like, we don't know who you're talking about, that she stayed there for more than one night. So what if the night was the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd? Three nights. And why was that? I don't know. <laughs> but they may have flown back. And also, who picked them up, huh? We don't know that. I'm sure the FBI knows that. Law enforcement must. Somebody must have picked them up at the airport. So there's all those details missing. But if they flew there to clear out their storage unit. And this is why Cassie wouldn't say, you know, that's what he usually does when he what? <laughs> when he what? When he needs to cool off? We don't know. We don't know what the end of the sentence is. But to me, it's making a little bit more sense that they flew back. Right? And now I'm thinking about the van. So if they flew back, maybe they left the van back there. Maybe parked where it was parked at the hotel. We don't know. Probably because it's the closest place to the airport. And then flying back on the 23rd, no, on the 21st, to stay there on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, checking out on the 24th, FaceTiming with her mom on the 25th, saying now they're heading, they're going on their trip. Which seems a little bit like mission accomplished to free up some, some money for an extended trip. It's interesting to consider. I don't always make these videos where I think out loud, so don't come for me. <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud because I'm like, hmm, like this is interesting. And why is it interesting? Because Rose Davis says, no, they stayed in a condo. And now all these condos we've been deep diving that we have on record so far that I've also looked at, we can see it's not them. It's not those. And look, look at what Cassie says here. Unfortunately, in the dark as much as everybody else. What was so. your what was your brother like when he was um, in middle school and a teenager? What was he I like? I didn't live in the house at the time. Has he ever been violent with you? No. Never violent been with anybody? With brother? I mean, me and my sister went I... at it. She pulled my hair, kicked <laughs> me in my eye. We're, we're eight or nine years apart. We're not. Yeah, you're you're old. Yeah. He's um. not like my. We were little right. together, brother. I mean, I was. But you guys house. lived in the house at Wabasso. Everybody lived there. No, my parents lived in New York. My parents lived in New York. 
Okay. Oh, they live in New York. And you lived in there. Yeah. We were a mile and a half. And then Brian and Gabby came there. They, when they moved down to Florida, they moved in with us to get on their feet. To get on their feet and get jobs. How did they meet? High school. High school. That's... Hmm. Well, I, you know. I feel like I'm answering too many things. Why? It's still my, my question is why? When they say, how did you meet? And then Cassie looks at her husband and says, high school. And he's like, yeah, yeah, high school. Why? Why? Why is that? And then it's like, wait, now I feel like I'm answering too much. Why? <laughs> why? Why are you answering too much now? That's my question. I'm allowed to have questions. Like, hmm, this is just making me think. I'm just looking at all this and I'm like, okay. So see, Cassie did say, that Brian and Gabby lived at 4343 Wabasa Avenue while they were living there, this couple right here, so that they could get on their feet. Now, what the hell, at what point did the mom and dad move in there? That's interesting. Could you guys please be detectives and go and look at this? <laughs> this is also why I'm thinking out loud. Could we just find out all the condos? Could we also find out when did Roberta and Christopher Laundry move into that house because this couple lived with Gabby and Brian for a time and then what and then what when did they move into this new house here well this house behind them it's just interesting it'll be interesting for the timeline so it's things I'm thinking about yeah yeah I understand and 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 I appreciate and respect out of respect we're gonna leave we're gonna we're, we're gonna leave out of respect we're gonna leave Appreciate I don't think I don't think we're gonna be back and I'm sorry this is what we wanted and this we were told not to come out but I can't have my kids crying okay so this one says it's widely known that Gabby Petito moved in with her boyfriend Brian Laundry after years of being together but it was reported that she lived at the Laundry family home in Northport Florida according to a live video on TikTok from Rose Davis Petito's best friend she actually lived inside of a condo owned by the Laundry family with Brian where did they live? So they say, according to details shared by Davis, Petito and Laundry lived near the Laundry's Northport home, but not in the same house as his parents. So we're going to do map time in a second, but it's still been debunked already. So, but we're going to look at it anyway. Davis went on TikTok to answer questions on October 16th, where she was asked about Petito and Laundry's living situation. She did not live with the Laundry's parents. They had a condo that the parents paid for. The Laundry's reportedly owned a two-bedroom condo that was only 18 miles away from their home in Northport, sitting in Venice, Florida, which also happens to be close to the Carlton Reserve where Laundry was believed to be. Records reveal that they purchased the condo six years ago in 2015 for $99,500. Once Petito and Laundry went on their road trip across the country, Christopher and Roberta put the house back on the market, selling it only two weeks later on July 30th for $144,000. While she can't reveal much about the ongoing investigation being done by the FBI, she did comment on how she had visited them and hung out with them in a condo that they lived in together in a condo. She did not clarify whether or not the Venice condo was the one she was referring to, which led internet sleuths to do some digging in order to try and confirm the information given to them by Davis. The Sun reported that the condo found on Realtor.com from Venice, Florida was the condo that Davis was talking about. However, this was met with skepticism from online detectives. Twitter user and investigative journalist, right, Jonathan Lee Riches, revealed that he believes the Laundries have sold three different properties in the last three years, including the two-bedroom condo in Venice. So he, on his Twitter, he says, Gabby, and Petito, Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry never lived in this Fenwick condo, which is the one you guys have all sent me pictures of. I can see they didn't live in it just based on what the hell's inside it. Like, damn, we're living there. It's not them. Um, but the tenant stayed. The tenant is the woman in the condo photo and not Roberta. Laun not Roberta. Laundry's had a property manager. Okay. So in a video he posted to Twitter, the current tenant reveals that Brian and Gabby never lived there because she has lived there for six years. So the Venice one debunked, according to this person who says they lived there for six years. Upon further digging, <laughs> there was another condo in Northport, Florida that the Laundry family sold earlier this year, actually in January 2020, which matched descriptions given by Davis and was seen in multiple Instagram posts from Gabby and Brian. Then uh, he says, Jonathan Lee Riches, Today I visited the Linksman Place condo in Northport that the Laundry family sold earlier this year and saw a note left on the front door by the new homeowner. I did not knock and immediately left. It says, I am the new owner. I have never met the Laundries. They were not at the closing. 
Please respect my privacy and do not disturb me. No trespassing. But it says I am the new owner. So I still think it's this one, but let's just see. It was Brian's what? Brian's Instagram under the green. They're looking at that. The home on 5100 Linksman had a note from the current owner that said, I'm the new owner. Never met the laundries. They were not at the closing and asked that people show them privacy, not wanting to be involved in the chaotic case. Right? And they say more users on Twitter claimed that 510 Linksman location was also close to Publix that they worked at and the Taco Bell that Petito had worked at previously. This is all speculation, but if Davis is to believe, that would mean that Brian and... Why do they say Brian and Petito? Brian and Gabby lived in a condo not far from the laundry's, laundry's parents until they went on their cross-country road trip. Okay? So, you know what time it is. You know what time it is. It's map time. back with you okay so let's just make sure we can get it real nice over here all right we've got that that should be good okay so here we go this is the laundry house, as we know, 4343 Wabasa Avenue. I don't think we're ever going to forget that house. And then this is the house close to the house, right? 5100 Linksman Place. This one. Yes. Okay, so that's the house, and it's not the one that we've been looking at photos of, all the links you guys sent. So there's that, and what's interesting is, of course, that that means Brian would know that little area quite well. But on the way, then to this other condo is, uh, of course, just about the midway point is kind of where, it's not exactly where his car was found, but look, it's right here by this reserve. You know what I'm saying? The hell, there, the Carlton Reserve. His car wasn't found exactly. This is now temporarily closed, right? It was found somewhere here. But not in the parking lot. Actually on the lawn. Because they said they had to cut around it, right? Damn. But anyway, uh, what's interesting. Sorry for zooming out so much. But there is the home. And I believe this is where they were living in the condo. For a time. But it was sold. I'll look now. I think in January 2020. Which means for the whole of 2020... In half of 2021, they lived at the laundry house. Not? Which is interesting that Rose is like, nah, they never lived there. So when was she friends with Gabby? How close was she? It, I'm not implicating her. I'm just saying maybe she knew her for a portion of time there. I don't know. This is so weird. But there is that. Okay. Northport 5100 Linksman Place. And I mean, it could literally just all of this would cut through there you would know it pretty well and it all this all cuts through to the park and also where the car was found so that's interesting go Doug from Northport Florida go check all this out and area X <laughs> but um, this is unit 40 where the other apartment was where the lady says she has lived for six years so this one has been debunked and what I did now is just Sarasota to see where Rose Davis allegedly lives somewhere in Sarasota. So I just put Sarasota there. We don't know exactly where. But she said it was about a 30 minute drive for Gabby to get to her. And when Gabby was going there the one day, then she realized she didn't have her ID on her. Because I think Brian took it out of her wallet or bag or whatever. And she couldn't go and she had a huge fight, right? So if we go from... That little linksman place that's a 45 minute drive but I mean she could live anywhere here Rose it didn't have to be this long of a drive 
it could be right here, you know, a 30 minute drive. I'm just saying that doesn't debunk it just because it's 45 minutes there. So let me know what you guys think. What do you think about that? Now I'm going to take this off for a second. Put myself like this. Sorry for the little circle in my glasses. And if we look at um, Realty Hop, right, for 5100 Linksman Place, it does not include a garage, a porch, or basement square footage. In total, the area measurement is 4,020 square feet. It's located in the Sarasota County School District. Sarasota County. And Rose lived in Sarasota somewhere. So did Rose live there too? <laughs> hmm. hmm. The property was last sold in March on March in March 2021. March 16, 2021, for $140,000. Okay. All right. All right. And if we keep it rolling, if we keep it rolling, amenities, dishwasher, garbage disposal, range washer assigned, dryer, microwave, refrigerator, central aircon. Right, we've got the building area source. It says L, building quality type 9, construction type, all kinds of things. Parking space 0. I don't know why it's 0, but okay. Now, the lot size depth feet and lot size square feet is 4,020 square feet. Garage square area 0. So um, what am I looking for? storage locker do you know what i mean if i'm finding a storage locker with this and that's where they lived and that's what it was part of but i don't know interior walls patio type location basement area zero right so that's what we've got and then if we go down i know you're not seeing it right now but it says um i mean i can always show you that's the one You can see here, um, previous owners, previous owners, full name, Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry, right? Ownership, current owner, Applegate. Interesting, right? Here's the district codes and everything assessed in the year 2020, right? So, uh, sale amount. But when was it sold? Exactly when? It says off the market, January 6th, 2020. Okay. So that's interesting, right? I don't know. I think it's that one, but uh, let me know what you think. So let's take this off here. So Rose said, Rose said, they had a condo that the parents paid for. She said she couldn't uh, share much about the case, but she's confident that the FBI is doing their job. Okay. And then one more thing was, where's this article? I've got so many tabs open. You have no idea. <laughs> so many are open right now. Damn. I just want to find this one thing. So says, Gabby Petito's best friend is scared Brian Laundry will hurt her if he's about to get caught and reveal stalker hell. She said she did worry about what the fugitive would do if he became desperate. Okay. She was scared what Brian Laundry would do if he was desperate. I don't have a fear that he'll come after me, but I do fear that if he's about to get caught, then maybe there's a possibility he tried to hurt me. Why? I'm sorry, I'm so small here now. There we go. Interesting. She added, I just don't think he's that stupid. While Davis did clear up some confusion about the condo, right, before they embarked on their cross-country road trip, she mostly steered clear of answering questions about laundry. I don't really want to talk about Brian because when this goes to trial, we need all our ducks in line, she explained. When this goes to trial. Even though she said the FBI is doing their job, she says when this goes to trial, so we know he's alive. I'm just going to assume right there from that sentence. During the live session, she also revealed the struggle of being thrust into the public eye, including having to deal with a stalker. Davis also assures, uh, assured commenters that she was confident in the law enforcement officers handling Gabby's case. The FBI is doing their job, she said, suggesting that there were aspects about the case that could not yet 
be made public. Ooh. Right, right, right. What's that? You got him? You know where he is? Huh? <laughs> Davis is Gabby's friend who was planning to meet up with a couple at some point during their road trip. She spoke about the plans briefly during the live session, noting that she was expecting a call from Gabby on her birthday on August 29th. We had made plans for after my birthday to go to Yellowstone, Davis explained. But when you're living the van life, you can't always have a set plan. Gabby seemed like someone who liked to plan things. So she was going to call me on my birthday, but she did not call me on my birthday. So she said she wasn't initially worried about the missed phone date because things naturally pop up uh, during a cross-country road trip. Okay. So I'm not implicating Rose in anything. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying, oh, the FBI is doing a good job. When this goes to trial was interesting language. And the other interesting language was Cassie's interview when she said, they were talking about, uh, he was talking about where they would go next, where they would go next. They were talking about where they would go next. They were clearing out the storage unit to put things back in the house. Okay. No idea when he went back. All right. But you know, he was there on the 17th. And we know Gabby was sitting in the hotel eating Uber Eats, possibly that her dad sent her on the 21st. So we're starting to really narrow down a little timeline here. If, perhaps, if. Gabby and Brian flew home to clear out the storage unit to put stuff back in a condo or in the laundry home. Right. Interesting, interesting. And then maybe they checked into this place on the 21st. I don't know why. 21st, 2nd and 3rd because was seen. But now is that a real sighting? Because the hotel won't even confirm it. So where's the footage? Was she really seen checking out on the 23rd? If not... Maybe they only stayed there on the 21st. We don't know. It's interesting. But what we do know is that she FaceTimed her mom on the 25th. They were at a restaurant on the 27th. Big fight. We obviously know about the 12th, the body cam footage. 27th, big fight at the restaurant. And then for Brian to arrive back in Northport, Florida. Actually on the first, right? Seen on camera entering Northport, Florida on the first. But if Doug from Northport, Florida, who you, most of you watch his channel, who's driving around looking for him, says that he saw the van, he doesn't say, he said it's a 50-50 chance, which I like those kind of odds when it's not like I'm 100% sure it is. He said it's 50-50, but he saw the van just like that, parked in a certain place, right? You guys have sent me the location pins. We can look at that sometime. But that was on the 31st. <laughs> so that dude drove and drove and drove and drove and drove. So quick, right? <sighs> so much to think about. There's so much to think about. I should make a video of all the things that bug me about this case, right? Mm. Anyway, <laughs> I can go on and on right now. I can feel I'm like in this like thinking space. So I'm going to go and think. I just wanted to show you that, that the condos and just distinguish it, especially on the map. And I wanted to show you the they, the word they, and then Rose saying when this goes to trial. That gives us some hope, you know what I'm saying? It gives us some hope. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.